I would just give you a tour of the summer garden. So come on with me. All right, first up we have yellow squash in there. So, and what happened with this is I, the squash vine board, despite my best intentions, I just I don't have time to keep up with my um, insecticide, my organic insecticide that I'm using. So um, the squash vine board did get in them all, and I did a little surgery and removed them, but this one did not recover. So that one's done, and I'll, I'll plant some, a new one there. I've always got starts going in the back, it's easy for me to keep them wet, so I have little butternut squash plants and little zucchini plants because I know I'm going to lose some, and I can just plant them again. And there was an acorn squash in here. Lost it to that squash vine borer. I hate that thing. Over here, we have our Swiss chard that did amazing right here. Isn't that amazing? So it went all through the winter, and oh, that's our garden helper. That's Burton Guster. He's my favorite garden helper. He comes out in the garden with me when I garden and runs around, helps me out. Anyway, so Swiss chard, I'm loving it. We're eating a lot of it, sauteing and eggs and um, Chinese dishes, um, Thai dishes. And then this is cantaloupe. So it's just getting started. We'll be excited to be eating some sweet cantaloupe. And then if you pan over here, there is a volunteer vine that came up. It's actually growing in the front flower bed. They have they have these melons. Let me show you the type of melon it has. It's a cross between a Chinese yellow yellow melon and a cantaloupe. So um, it's kind of a hybrid we did last year, and it tastes a cross between both. So it's pretty good. It's a sweet but crispy one. So. There's one drawback to it. When it gets ripe, it cracks on the outside and um, then the bugs get in it before it's actually really ripe. So that's one drawback. So I'm not sure I'll save the seed and, and try to do it again next year, but we'll see. All right, moving on. As you can see, the tomatoes are pretty much done for the season. We're harvesting. I've gotten buckets and buckets and buckets off of it. This is called a Juliet Roma. So it's a cherry Juliet tomato. They're really good and they're really good for sauces and they're very prolific. Instead of sometimes the Roma tomatoes are harder to grow, these cherry Romas are a lot easier to grow. But it's just in Dallas, it's the end of the tomato season. It's getting hot. And what is causing this? Spider mites. Most likely spider mites. So they just take it up and eat it all. So we'll just harvest this and then we'll be done with tomatoes until fall. We'll plant some new plants and we'll go again in fall. Try to get some tomatoes. Even if they're green tomatoes, we can do stuff with that too, like chow chow and fried green tomato. So over here is my son's favorite. He's still sleeping, but it's summer. He gets to sleep in. But um, this is Sweet 100 and it has gotten a little out of control. I. I think I'll stake them a little bit differently next year. Maybe I'll do like a teepee with the cattle panels, make kind of a teepee with the tomatoes inside because it's kind of spreading out here. So we're stepping on it when we harvest. But again, this will harvest and then we will pull it down and plant something else here and then go again in fall. These came up all on their own, my beautiful marigold patch. I want to put an herb garden here, but I hadn't built it yet, and these came up. I laid my marigolds here when I pulled them up, and they came up, so it's beautiful. I'm just going to leave Wait, it. Wait, these are wild? Yeah, they just came up on their own, all of I them. I thought you purposely planted all of these. No, right there. I didn't even do any soil. It's just bark mulch they came up in, so that's really fun. The garden does have a low spot there, and so they get a, quite a bit of water. Kind of a water settles right here. So that's probably why they're doing so well. Now on the other side of my tomato plants, I have some bell peppers. So look at that bell pepper. Yay. Look at the size of that. So they were kind of shaded by the tomato plants a little bit. So the tomato plants obviously are dying, so they'll be removed. And the bell peppers might need a little shade cloth over them. We'll see. We'll see how they do. So let's 
see, what's next? This is my herb garden. So we've got thyme, um, lavender, uh, more thyme, different type of thyme, lemon thyme, which goes really good with fish dishes. And we have some garlic that probably needs to be harvested now. Let's see how it looks. Look at that. It looks good. I'll let it dry out and um, see if it's formed the individual bulbs and then the rest will be ready to pull. So I'm going to put that right there, let it dry out and check it later. And this is oregano. Also put that in all sorts of things. So here's my herb garden. And here's my monster zucchini. So um, here's some zucchini growing in there baby almost ready to pick give it a day it grows really fast if you miss a few days sometimes you end up with monsters mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember that year yes, painfully yes, true okay now the squash vine borer also got a bee these are keen this is okay right? no that is just a crazy sunflower plant that grew up and it's you know look how tall it is and they're that little bitty bitty sunflowers. Just Look at the flowers at the very, very top. top. So I'm not too fond of it. It's kind of an eyesore. I don't know, but uh, I haven't taken it down yet. I want to see what it would do. It looked so promising when it first started, but it's gotten a little out of control for a suburban block. Anyway, my zucchinis, um, the squash vine borer got them all also. So what I did was a little surgery, and I'm going to show you how to do a little surgery on your zucchini. If all your plants go awry and I'll link up to a, what I do to prevent the squash vine borer but obviously haven't done a very good job this year. So I come down here you can see this little this grass coming out here it looks like like wood shavings or something. Can you get a shot of that? Yeah right there. That tells me that there's a squash vine borer in there. The squash vine borer moth laid her eggs and she put a, a little worm crawled into that plant and started eating from the inside out. So what will happen is I'll come out here one day and this plant will just be laying on the ground dead. You know, fine one day, not the next. So we can get these out of the way so you get a better shot. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut. And sometimes this goes better than other times. <laughs> I'm gonna cut a little wedge. Just open it up, make a hole. And I think I see our squash vine bore in there. Yep, I see him. Okay, I think I see him in there. Come on. Oh, I thought I saw him. Maybe not, false alarm. Nope. No, I lied. He's not in there. He's not down there. Oh, there he is. There he is. Look how fat he is. Isn't that awful? That has been what's eating my plant. That is a squash vine borer larvae. And looks like we got it just in time because my plant was not going to last much longer with that. So what I'll do is give that to the chickens or I might, I'll just smash it since we're recording today. Usually I go back and give it to the chickens. So I'm just gonna smash it. And then what do I do with this big hole I've made? Well, I'm just gonna dig up some earth and put over it. And it will, it's, hopefully it will be fine. It's a good strong plant. So if all your plans go awry, you don't get out here to put your preventative on, you can always do that. All right, so I did that to all the others this morning when I got up, So, um, and I found squash vine borer in all of them, and sometimes you'll find more than one, but usually you get the one out and you're good. All right, so I've got a treat for you. My kale seeds are ready to harvest, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Let me grab some scissors. Okay, I've got a bowl. I'll cut them off so I can show you. A lot of times I'll cut them off and take them inside. 
there are some bugs on this kale because the scale is, you know, way past its prime. So, but the seeds are pretty perfect. So I'm just gonna crack them open and they just pop open and there are all my kale seeds for the next season. And as you can see, I have got, look at how many I've got to do. So that's gonna come with, a, that's gonna be a lot of seed for me that I don't have to pay for, I don't have to order. And one way also you can do it is you can put it in a paper bag and just shake it real vigorously and sometimes these will pop open and then you can just empty the bag into this. So there's kale seeds and um, on my site, I've got a seed envelope. I'll put a link up to it that you can just make yourself. You can print it out. It's a template. You just fold it, make it yourself, label it, and store them. I store them in the refrigerator in a little drawer, little vegetable bin I have just to keep them cool because I'm in Dallas, Texas. And it gets hot and humid, even inside sometimes. <laughs> All right, so the other treat I've got is my butter crunch lettuce. We're gonna harvest the seeds for that too. But this is Egyptian spinach. This is so exciting because I found this last year and I grew it and it loves a drought, very drought tolerant. It's a great green. You can put it in stews, soups, smoothies, uh, saute it with eggs. It tastes really good. It tastes a lot like spinach. It's just delicious. It has no bitter taste. No sliminess, it's amazing. I love it, and it grows. These were two seeds, two tiny seeds. It's gonna grow really big, and I'm gonna be harvesting it. Like how big? All through the summer. Over my head. It's gonna grow over, and it's gonna be bushy. I'm gonna cut it off right here, and it'll bush out a little bit more. So it'll be a, two bushes. It's gonna provide my family with a lot of good greens all summer long, when greens are scarce. Okay. I have no idea it was gonna get that big. <laughs> when you first planted it and it started to grow, I was like, Mom, this isn't going to be enough. Yeah, it will be. All right. So this is my butter crunch lettuce. It's my favorite. It really holds up and um, to harvesting, and it holds up to give to other people. So sometimes I let, have sponsors to give harvest and give for, and I don't like to give the lettuce to them and have it be all wilty like Black Seed Simpson did not work out for me in that regard. All right, so here we go again. These, you, it blooms. So these were little blooms, or they are gonna be little blooms. And then it comes into this little puff, this little white puff. And this is the part that I want, the seed. So you can pick them off. And you can kinda open them up. And you got some little lettuce seeds. You can see that. I only got, I think, one or two there. And then the chaff can go off to the side. So let's we'll see. I think some of these have already lost their seed. Like they're probably, probably blown off. So that might be why. Okay, this has a little bit more in it. See right there? And they all, they have this little puffy thing in them so they can blow in the wind. But that's going to be a lot of seed when I get in harvesting this. Again, you can take it and cut it off and put it in a paper bag and shake it and a lot of these will come off. So either way you want to do it. I like to cut it off and take it inside and just while I'm listening to music or listening to podcast, urban farm podcast or something, then I'll just take them each and, and work with them in my spare time. All that spare time. So <laughs> that's that for that. This is chives. It just grows, it's perennial, comes back every year. I got some baby plants back there just come up all on their own. So these are chives and they're really good on potatoes. Really good to see some things. All right. That is kind of what's going on with the garden. I have a couple empty spaces. Um, this is gonna be eggplants. I don't start mine by seed. I always get my plants in the nursery and I haven't done that yet, so I need to do that. So that's eggplant, it's gonna be. And then this was where my super fantastic tomatoes were. And they were super fantastic. <laughs> we had a huge buckets and buckets and buckets. We gave away, gave away, gave away. It was really fun, they were delicious. They're my big, bigger ones. And, um, but like I said, it's getting hot here. 
first day of summer was yesterday so it's time for the tomatoes to go tomato season is over in North Texas it's coming to a close until fall so I tore them all down and this volunteer can it looks like a cantaloupe to me what does it look like to you I don't know I think cantaloupe but it came up on its own and it's doing really well so I decided okay well I will just grow cantaloupe up here or whatever it turns out to be and a couple of weeds I leave in the garden is this purslane came up by itself the rabbits love it so surprised it's not gone yeah <laughs> well no here. rabbits can yeah Burton here that's true our one rabbit that gets to come in the garden all right so I think it's very ironic how we built the fence to keep the rabbits out and um, we just put one in it <laughs> yes we garden with one yes I think there's enough for him to eat whatever he wants and then for us also to get a lot so yeah Robert Go. The other thing we have growing in our garden, the side yard, is we have comfrey this year. I'm so excited about it. It's supposed, rabbits are supposed to love it and chickens are supposed to love it. So it's supposed to get really big and then you cut it off, feed it to the animals. It grows back a couple times during the season and then it spreads its root system you can cut the actually take it out cut the roots up and divide it into little pots and little plants so I'm excited about that on the homestead and we have sweet potato patch here our sweet potatoes are growing there we started little slips in May so excited to be harvesting that at the end of summer um, sweet potatoes are not like regular Irish potatoes Sweet potatoes are a relative of morning glory and they love the heat and they soak up the sun. And you can also eat the greens. So we've been harvesting greens and you can saute them with stir fries, you can saute them with eggs. They're delicious and they're very good for you. So that's pretty much all I can think of of the summer garden. That's what's going on. I wonder what's going on with your summer garden. Well, I'm glad you joined me today to see our summer garden and um, I hope you've learned something exciting about gathering seeds, kale and lettuce. I'm excited about it because I don't have to spend money on those seeds. So um, till next time, happy gardening and beekeeping and chicken keeping and rabbit chasing from Bloom Where You Planted. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.